Okay, welcome back to CalcPage, the Calculus and Computer Science Archive online. Uh, we've been online since 1988. Again, here's my blog about teaching with technology. And you can get more materials on eBay. If you search for TI Active, you can go to my website, calcpage.tripod.com, and click this. Or just go to eBay and search TI Active. Um, so, let us begin. Today's topic is Newton's method. Okay, so we're going to talk about Newton's method for finding roots of functions, particularly strange irrational radicals like square roots and cube roots of non-perfect squares and non-perfect cubes and so forth. So let us begin. Uh, last time we did a uh, you know practice run for uh, September 9th. Okay, we were just like re re redoing September 9th for practice, but this is actually today's class, and today is the 13th. And uh, this is what we did. All right, so just a little 10-minute snippet. Let's see. Kindly consider the following function. Let's say you have a parabola. It so, looks so, look something like this. Let's say it's y equals x squared minus 2. And I want to find this root. Now, algebraically, that's easy. What's the zero of this function? When is y zero? What's x? So solve for, for x when y is zero, and you get x squared minus 2 is zero, or x squared is 2, or x is plus or minus the root square root of 2. So you got this one too, right? But say you want a decimal uh, equivalent for that. How are you going to estimate that root? And say you don't, maybe you don't even know what the answer is. Can you get a decimal approximation? Well, sure. If you graph this on uh, our calculator, the T89, I've got to wake this up, make this a little bit bigger. Oops, hang on. Make this a little bit bigger. Put it right there. Now, well, maybe not that one. so big. There you go. All right, so if we turn this on and we graph this function, let's see, x squared mm, minus 2. And let's say zoom 4. And there it is. Okay, so notice that the root, let's say this root, the positive root, is between 1 and 2. So I'm going to, I can guess at somewhere around 1 point something. Or I could guess it's near 2. It's a little bit less than 2. What if I make that guess? Well, let's go back over here. What if I guess the answer is 2? Well, look at the tangent line there. If we draw the tangent line there, whoops, something like this, whoops. <laughs> okay, let's say that's it. Notice that the zero of the tangent line is closer than your guess to the actual root. Aha! Uh -huh. So, let's find out what that better estimate is. What's the equation of the tangent line there? Okay, let's see. Uh, give it a little more room. Okay, so, this is just a tangent line question. If f of x is x squared minus 2, f prime is what? Well, it's 2x. Now, I need to evaluate these functions at x equals 2, my guess. So f of 2 is going to be 2 squared is 4 minus 2 is 2. And f prime of 2 is 2 times 2 is 4. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 is the equation of a line given point slope. There's a point, x1, y1, and m. There's the m. So how do I find the zeros of this line? I want to find out where this tangent line hits the x-axis. Well, again, plug in 0 for y and solve for x. So what do we get now? Well, let's see. That's negative 2 equals 4x minus 8. Let's add 8 to get uh, 6 equals 4x. So x is 6 fourths or 3 halves or 1.5 is a better guess still. Now, you know that the square root of 2 is not 1.5, but it's closer to 1.5 than my original guess, the 2. Hmm. Can we automate this? Can we get an algorithm that we can uh, apply repeatedly to get better and better successive roots? Well, let's find out. Let's redo this question more in general. Okay, let's say you have this a function looks like this. 
doesn't have to be a parabola necessarily, but let's say it is for now. And here's your function. Now let's do this more in general, okay? Um, I'm trying to find this root, but I don't know it. I'm going to make a guess. Let's call it x sub 0. And draw the tangent line from there. And let's call this 0 x sub 1. How do you find x sub 1? Well, that's Newton's method. We're going to find a, uh, an algorithm, a step-by-step -step process to get a better root, x sub 1. And if I don't like that, do it again, x sub 2, x sub 3, x sub 4, x sub 5. Hopefully, we'll get some kind of a limit or convergence table. So here we go again. y equals f of x, and y prime equals f prime, whatever it is. I want to evaluate this at my guess, x sub 0. So y of x sub 0 is f of x sub 0. And y prime at x sub 0, I know this is tedious, we're making a point. I'm doing the exact same thing I did in the previous page, where x sub 0 was 2, and where f was x squared minus 2. OK, so let's do the, the equation of a tangent line. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. OK, well, it's, it's not x1. Right now, I renamed it. I called it x0. So how do you get the 0 of this tangent line? I'm going to call that x1. Well, what's x1 when y is 0? Solve for x1. Well, you can distribute like we did last time and subtract and so forth. But in this case, I think it probably would be easier just to divide. 0 minus f of x0 is just negative f of x0. What if I divide both sides by the derivative? I get negative f x0 at x0 divided by f prime at x0 equals x1 minus x0. So how do you get x1 based on x0? Add this, and you get x sub 1 is, I'm going to put x0 in front, x0 minus f of x0 over f prime at x0. OK, so that's my general rule. Let's apply it to the function we had originally. How do I get, <clears throat> here's the general rule for Newton's method, OK? The idea is uh, pick a guess, plug it into f, divide it by the derivative, subtract it from your guess, and that's a better guess. If you don't like that, plug in x sub 1, x sub 1, x sub 1, get x sub 2. Don't like that, plug in x sub 2, x sub 2, x sub 2, get x sub 3, and so forth. OK. so x sub n plus 1, the next guess, is x sub n, the previous guess, minus f of x sub n over f prime at x sub n. OK. Um, now, remember when f was x squared minus 2, and f prime is 2x. Let's write this. Let's say x sub 1 is going to be x sub 0 minus f at x sub 0. OK, that's x sub 0 squared minus 2 over f prime at x sub 0, 2x sub 0. OK. Now, if we plug in our initial guess is, I think it was 2, what do we get? x sub 1 is going to be 2 minus 2 squared minus 4 over 2 times 2. Well, this is 4 minus 2 is 2. And this is 4, so I got 2 fourths is a half. A half from 2 is 1 and a half. 3 halves or 1.5. Wasn't that the same guess? But what if I don't like that guess? Let's plug in 3 halves back in here and see what we get. Okay, but we're close to running out of time, so we'll leave it at that for now, and we'll come back to this another time. Thank you.